Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. It's just a normal Friday here at The Bio Dude. Uh, we are half, we are about to close up the third quarter in about, uh, sorry, the second quarter in about two weeks and uh, figured I'd get some building in. So I've been wanting to upgrade Nagini and Fierce's enclosure for a long time. Nagini is over 10 years old and she's a runt. Uh, and then we have Fierce, who's just a, a big old adult male corn snake. They were living together in a 75, and it's about time that we give them a little bit of an upgrade. I'm really looking forward to this because if you guys remember my prior video, we had some green tree frogs and some green anoles living with them, which are all doing great, by the way. And we actually have them over here. Um, we have a total of two, uh, sorry, three green tree frogs and uh, uh, one green anole living in here and doing great in this 18 cube we'll eventually get them into something bigger but i decided to separate them out because i wouldn't be able to keep them in the type of enclosure re reliably that i'm moving these uh corn snakes into so i'm really excited to share this with you guys i'm sure nagini and fierce are excited too let's get building So first, let's talk, let's talk specifics. I have a four by two by two cages enclosure here. Uh, this is the normal uh, four and a half inch lip. This is not the seven inch substrate lip. Uh, at one day, once I, do, once I get more of a space, I'll upgrade them to a 60 by 36 by 36. But for now, with the space I have in my building, this is what I have to work with. Uh, we are running an Arcadia 50 watt halogen with a heat lamp cage. We are running 6% UVB, as well as a solar grow 36 inch underneath. So we have the UVB in the front and we have the uh, plant light in the back. The substrate that's in here is the, all of the same substrate from the original enclosure that was in the 75. Uh, and it was filled with life. Springtails, two different, two to three different species of isopods, little bit of earwig, even saw a couple spiders. So I'm just kind of letting it all thrive in here and we're really going for a, a, a North American type of biome. Uh, and of course I'll get all this back cleaned up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start, start getting building here. So it is my terra firma and in here we have some AAA sphagnum moss and some leaf litter and some cork bark pieces thoroughly mixed together. The first thing I want to do is their basking area. And I found this beautiful piece of dragonstone. And I sell this, and soon I'll be offering it online too. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this right like that. So that way the rock is directly underneath the heat mat, underneath the, the heat bulb. So it's going to absorb in some of that heat, output heat around the tank, as well as give them a nice little place to rest their bodies. Uh, and then I also need to work on a cool place for them to hide. So I do have here a really nice looking cork bark tube and all the hardware that you see next to me was, is from their original tank. And I'm gonna attempt to use as much, reuse as much of it as possible, just because these guys, they did so well uh, with how it was before. So. And of course, I want my people, I want my consumers to be able to see them when they come in here. So, and what I am going to do is I'm actually going to partially bury this so that way it goes into the ground and then bury it right here. There we go. Now my water bowl, this is, they, I, I, have, I use a rather large water bowl for them. So I'm likely going to have my water bowl right here in the middle, pick up, pull out, really easy to put in. Our hot spot's gonna be around 92, 95. Cool spot's gonna be the low 80s. Uh, I'll be watching it really closely with my temp gun as well as my thermometer hygrometer. So I also have, this is the only piece of wood that is not original from the enclosure. This is some of the Galapagos driftwood that we offer on our website. This is the extra large piece. We listed 15 extra large pieces up and they all sold out in like under an hour but I got to cherry pick this one and keep it for myself. That's the hardest part about my job, guys, is uh, me wanting to get to keep everything that comes in, whether it's plants or whether it's uh, animals or whether it's wood. So we got some really large Sanservias here that have been thriving. Look at this. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put this on the cool side. I'm gonna put this right in the back right here. And that's how this plant also has some younger, younger ones growing. Perfect. I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna put this here. Nope, I don't like that. I do like this though. Okay, so put this here. There we go. Oh yeah, I love how that looks. And it also is gonna grow nice because you can see one of the pups coming off of the Sanservia right there. Okay, now obviously that back left corner is gonna be challenging just because of the amount of uh, the heat that's gonna be concentrated into that space. Um, over here, I do have some beautiful large ferns that I have been saving specifically for these guys that we sell at thebiodew.com. These are our large Southern Shield ferns. We have a whole bunch of them set aside. So, yeah, so I'm gonna actually take this. Now these guys, their root systems, we just gotta be pretty, they're fairly delicate. Uh, got most of the substrate off. Okay. And this is a trick I do for the cages. With what side you're working on, put masking tape over your tracking. So that way substrate or dirt or rocks or whatever does not get stuck inside the tracking. Okay. And I got another, oh, I got this beautiful, oh yeah, look at this, Korean rock fern. Yeah, okay, absolutely beautiful. It does work right here though. Yes, it does. All right, now you can see how clearly used all this wood is. It's, some of it has been eaten away by the isopods, rubbed up against with tons of shed and everything else on it. This wood has been in this enclosure. Like you can see where the bugs have eaten away at it. Uh, it's been in this enclosure for years, years, at least six years. So we're gonna continue to use all of it. Now with corn snakes, it's important that uh, you give them lots of places to climb, lots of places to feel comfortable so that way they can hide as well as the ability to uh, make sure that they can get away from each other if you're keeping multiple, multiple ones together. I don't think that's gonna work as much as I want it to. Let me see if I can get this bad boy in here. There it is. And as you can see, what I'm trying to do is make, try not to get this other side open. covers up that plant way too much. Okay, I like that, looks awesome. Okay, so next. All right, so I got this really nice looking Dracenia compacta here that has been growing for a long time. I mean, look at that root base right there. And this can handle a little bit of heat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put that in the back like this, making sure all the roots are covered up. Wow, that looks awesome. There's one more thing I wanna try before I completely can deal. I think that looks great. All right, and final, I got one more snake plant right here. This is actually a pup off of the one that's over here. And I'm actually gonna put that. The only problem is now this is gonna, okay, the water dish can actually fit right up there in the corner. So this is actually gonna go right here like this. Okay, let me stand back for a moment. I love how that looks. Can you? So in here, this is our water oak leaf litter, as you can see. 
clean, sifted, organized. When you buy leaf litter from Biodu, this is the quality that you can expect. Now, since this is a North American biotype, I am going to be doing a lot, a very generous layer of leaf litter throughout this entire enclosure. This is also going to help the isopods and the springtails because, I mean, let's face it, I just took all of their substrate and uprooted their habitat that they've been thriving in for many, many, many years. Uh, so, you know, I got to make sure to give them their respect to make sure that they get what they need to thrive, not just survive. And I can tell you, the snakes are gonna love this. There's a whole lot of areas for them to climb, places for them to hide. But the, really the most important thing here is that I can fit their water bowl the way that I wanted it to, I want it to be. Okay, so. This is their bowl right here. Yes. Now, that's perfect. Now, a little trick that I would like to show you guys. So what I like to do is I like to get a piece of cork bark, it floats, and I'll put it right in the water like this. And then when I fill it up, the cork floats. Now, this is mainly for like, for omnivores or carnivores that don't eat like rodents. However, uh, since there's a lot of isopods and stuff in here, they will probably make their way to the water and we obviously don't want them to drown. So that's what we're working on. We got some beautiful green moss here. And this is sparklets, sparklets water, so it's reverse osmosis. Clean, not have any chlorine, chlorides, or ammonia in it. Now, you know me, I love my moss. So, and since I'm trying to make this look closer to like a swamp type of uh, biome here, that's right on the edge of like a creek or something or the edge of a cornfield in North America. So here we go. Yeah, look at this. Beautiful, beautiful, lush greenness right here. Look at that, it's beautiful. Boom. Now, we're gonna have to watch and see how this moss does because of the temperature in here. And also to make sure that, uh, you know, if the snakes knock it over or whatnot, that they have the ability to that the moss just doesn't get killed immediately type of thing. That's not gonna survive right there. That's gonna be a little too hot, but it'll survive right here. Okay. Stand back for a moment. I would say that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So I got my moss put in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish uh, uh, I'm going to give this enclosure a really solid mist and uh, make sure that the, uh, that all the plants get a good watering. But I'm going to go ahead and put my, my babies in their new home. So, again, so for those of you though, that don't know Nagini's story, I purchased her from the Hamburg Reptile Show. She was smaller than a normal earthworm. And she was eating pinky heads. And she was literally under 10 grams and we got her for ten dollars we was like my wife wanted her i was like there's no way this snake's gonna survive she's a very small specimen she's barely over two and a half feet long she eats uh eats uh frozen thawed mice she has bred with fierce dozens of times but has never laid eggs for me so um you know but she's a great pet and we she's never bitten us and whenever we do educational talks um, we always bring her because she's such, such a, a joy to, to have. Here you go, baby. There you go. This is definitely a good upgrade for you. I know you, you guys were waiting. And then we have Fierce. So Fierce, like his name implies, has a little bit more of an attitude. So these guys are both like your normal corn snakes. I think they're, they're, they're called an Okatee. 
Um, Fierce has a little bit more of a larger head than, than Nagini does. Uh, he is about 12, in at 12 to 18 inches longer than she is and has a significantly more of a girth. He actually handles small rats for us. Um, and he is, uh, he has no problem letting us know when he's upset about something. He's bitten us a couple times, but honestly, that's okay. Uh, because at the end of the day, we just want our snakes to be happy and feel like they're at home. So I'm just going to do a quick overview here. Here we go. Here you go, Fierce. Here you go. So a quick build video, but I, the best part about this is almost every single thing that you see in this enclosure was from their old one. 75% of their substrate, 85% of the plants, with exception of the ferns and the moss and the leaf litter. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think the snakes are really going to enjoy it and uh, we'll be sure to do an update video in a couple months. Thank you guys so much for your support. My name is Josh Alter. I am the owner and founder of The BioDude. You can come visit my website, thebiodude.com. See you guys here at The BioDude Houston, Monday through Friday, 9 to 4, and Saturday, 10 to 2. You can come see this enclosure for yourself and hopefully get some inspiration. Thank you guys to do the bites.